Now, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of coaxial and point source drivers because it puts the mids and highs all in one location. However, in a lot of cases, that's not really something you could do. So how do you choose between two-way and three-way setups? How do you add a speaker to a two-way setup? Uh, what are the advantages of all these things? Let's talk about it. First of all, dividing the frequency that you're trying to reproduce up amongst speakers that are designed to handle a small bandwidth uh, can be beneficial because you're going to be able to let that driver do what it excels at the best and not force a single driver to try to do a lot of jobs. The question is, first of all, where do you prioritize placement? Um, the human voice and the human ear are directly connected. Uh, your ear and your brain is designed to be able to emphasize the frequencies that are around same pitch as the human voice. And interestingly, your brain is also tuned to hear uh, pitches around the frequency of your voice. This is why, <laughs> you're going to love this, this is why most guys find females talking to be slightly off-putting. It's not quite right. Something slightly unnatural about it. Uh, when you listen to a female giving a speech, you tend to not really pay attention. This is also why uh, most people find people with uh, deeper voices to be more intriguing, be more interesting, uh, and more easy to pay attention to, because that frequency resonates better in your brain. Having said that, we don't want to go too deep down that crazy rabbit hole. But uh, James Earl Jones, Morgan Freeman, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, the uh, frequencies around the human voice, you want to have those in a position where they can be really clear, easy to understand without anything in, in front of them. So ideally having a three or a four or a five inch, something like that, that's mounted in a position where it's up in its center, up here, where it can really project and not be interrupted by anything in between the speaker and your ear. Those are going to be good to place in that position. Um, whereas drivers that are made to produce much lower frequencies down in the kick drums and the bass notes and things of that nature, can be placed in a more off-putting positions like in the doors. Problem is, doors are not very good at reproducing bass. They just leak too bad, and they, there's too much movement in them. Um, whereas a door can reproduce, you know, vocals pretty well, and you try to reproduce bass there, you find that it just doesn't work. Uh, there's also that 200 frequency null that you get by your driver door all the time. So yeah, pro tip, if you guys are experiencing funky sound in your music, add a, about a 100 to 200 uh, hertz boost to your driver's side door. You'll probably notice an improvement. But it comes at cost, and once you experiment with it, you'll figure that out. Back on track. So deciding on where you want to put those drivers is pretty important. Um, obviously, you have limitations of your vehicle what can be placed in different locations. Uh, you don't have a spot on your A-pillar, for example, for a three-inch mid. Well, you can hold it, head on over to uh, customspeakerpods.com. There is a link in the description and pick up some A-pillar speaker pods, which will help you be able to place speakers up there. You can get most of the time for most vehicles, you can get threes, fours, sometimes threes with tweeters, stuff like that big boost to your overall placement of speakers. That's probably the best um, bang for the buck um, improvement you can make in an SQ system is being able to get your vocals up near the dashboard or up above it. Those are going to be a big plus. Now, you can build your own, but they're quite expensive. So link down below. 
I even got a coupon code and it'll save you some money. Anyway, back on track again. Uh, so while the doors are a good location for Lowe's, they're not very good at Lowe's. And Custom Figure Pies does have pods for your doors, too, to help with that problem. But ultimately, what you're going to need to do is get in those doors and deaden the crap out of them. And I mean lots of deadener in lots of places. You've got to deaden the metal. You've got to deaden the plastic. You've got to uh, separate the different hard bits from each other so nothing's, you know, rattling and clapping against each other. You've got to do a lot of things to get that sound. Um, so keep that in mind. What I prefer to do, what I did in my Tahoe, is put a 10-inch subwoofer in the console up under the dash. So it's right up there in the center under the dash, and that helps bring in those lows. And then I just have a little stopgap measure with my door speakers where I'm playing you know, a little chunk of bandwidth there, and then I'm carrying most of those vocals up into the threes on my A-pillars and the tweeters in the doors also. Kind of a weird configuration, but it seems to work pretty good. I'm still tuning that, though. I have got it wired the way I want it now, I think. And I'm tuning it now. So it's not ready, but I will show you guys my preliminary starting points for all my tune. Um, anyway, the, uh, the, the, the problem is complicated, as you can see. So whenever you... Uh, start out with, for example, a two-way system. A two-way system is going to be one of the easiest to get sounding right because the, you can put those locations together. So, for example, if you have a five-inch and a tweeter on your A-pillars, that's going to be super easy to tune because everything is coming from the same location and all of the frequencies you're wanting to hear are right here in the same spot. They're going to really project and give you a great sound field. Problem is, you're working with a 5-inch cone, which can only produce so much volume. And you're also having to mount them up on your A-pillars. And, you know, there's limits to all that. The solution would be to separate that 5-inch cone into two different jobs. Make it a 3-inch cone so it fits better in the A-pillars and put some sixes or eights in the doors to handle the lower frequencies. So now you've got the frequencies covered better, but now you're spreading the source out. You've got the source down in the door, the source on the A pillar. They're not together. So you've got to electronically align those, and that's tricky to do. It is doable, but bear in mind it is tricky. So using more drivers gives you more frequency coverage with individual drivers handling different frequency ranges, but that also brings the problem of how to get all those frequencies to your ear, to where your ear hears them all as one thing. You don't want your, your ear to hear the doors and the A-pillars. You want them to hear the sound as a whole, and that's where the DSP comes in. And also a lot of learning about how to use the intricacies of a DSP. A DSP is like a paintbrush. You can make anything happen. But the more skilled you are using that brush, the better the results you're going to get in the end. Now, don't be overwhelmed by the DSP because it has some basic functionality which can help in even the most simple car audio installation and even the most amateur of people working on it. However, like any paintbrush, the better you get at using it, the more awesome it becomes. So having that DSP is crucial. If you're going to be running components, uh, two-way or three-way or four-way or whatever, uh, the more drivers you're going to put in different positions in your car, the more essential it is for you to have control over that sound. And that's where the digital signal processor comes in. Okay. So hand in hand, being able to mount drivers in odd locations, customspeakerpods.com, the links below. And alongside that, the digital signal processor to make your ears think all that sound is coming from the same locations. So it's a two-way thing. Um, 
If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't want to spend a lot of time learning how to do new things, and you don't want to make any major modifications, a two-way set is going to give you the most bang for your buck. It's not ideal, but it is much easier to get tuned in and sounding pretty good. If you're going to run multiple drivers on each side, you're going to need to come up with creative ways to mount them. And you're going to need to be able to digitally signal process that signal so that your brain thinks all those drivers are and, you know, makes the sound feel sound natural and not like it's separated by frequencies. So these are struggles and the struggle is real. But if you subscribe to my channel, you're going to find videos where I talk about all of these things and ways to sort these problems out more in depth than I am right now. Hopefully. This was helpful in giving you some idea of what you want to do and in which direction you want to go. As always, the most important thing you can do is plan. First, know your goal, where you want to get to, and have that dead set in your brain because it's going to dictate a lot of things. The second one is plan how to get to that goal piece by piece or buy the whole thing at one time. The point is you have to have a goal and you have to know what it is before you set off on this journey or else you're going to wind up walking in circles. Not going to work for you. Anyway, guys, like I said, if you found this helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave me some comments down below. What are your ideas? What are your thoughts? What are your questions? I'll do my best to answer all the comments and I do read them all. And you guys have a good one. Peace.